Hello and welcome to my knitting nook in Finland, Tampere. My name is Lena and I'm so glad you've joined me. I hope you have a knitting or some kind of a crafting, crocheting something with you. Today I'm going to talk about quite a few things. So there's going to be an, um, a shawl, woman, then there's going to be uh, Illa Besute t-shirt, then there's going to be a shawl uh, close to you, uh, some uh, thrumped mittens, uh, then uh, Call of the North sweater, a Lumme sweater, and uh, also monochrome pullover. And what else? A bit of yarn, some things that I have gotten on the way this week, seriously on the way, and then, well, yarny things, fibers. So you're welcome. First, some uh, finished objects. Uh, this is a shawl called Umen. Show you that from the pattern page, the name. And then the designer, I don't know if you can see, but it's Jonna Jolkin. You can find Umen also in English in Ravelry. And Jonna Jolkin has a tag, Nurja Jonna, very Finnish, uh, in Instagram and many other places. Uh, this was a challenge for a knitting podcast, a Finnish knitting podcast for September. And uh, I chose a very Finnish yarn called Vuonue. Wilhelmi and it is 100% uh, wool uh, no I'm wrong it's it's 70% uh, Finnish lamb wool and 30% of tensile so it's the brand for Lyasol and um, it smells like the lamb uh, particularly the gray. So I have two colors here. I have medium gray and then I have burgundy and if I show it to you so that there's light behind it you can almost see through it because in some lights you can see me through it or somehow. Of course when I wear it it doesn't look like that. And I wanted to, uh, it has a three, in the pattern it has a three stitch I-cord binding that goes all around the shawl uh, I was running low on the burgundy and I really wanted to have the burgundy as the edge so I decided to go for a two stitch I-cord and I think it worked well. I really like it. it. It's not as thick as it because it's a big difference if it's two or three stitches for the edging and I really I started from um, oh, here started going around went round and around and around and when I came to the same spot here I ran out of the burgundy and I had still this stretch of gray left so I used gray for just this part and I think it worked out well I think it's kind of it it, it kind of pops out the gray as well because it's not this is the only part where I have the contrast color gray as um as a panel here so that otherwise it's always uh, mixed with the burgundy so it kind of also gives the gray its own space to have it there. I really like this pattern. What I like about it is that it's garter stitch. So it's mindless, mindless knitting, most of it. There's a couple of places where you have to pay attention to increases and, and whatnot. Uh, also what I like about it is that you can carry the two yarns without having too many ends to weave in at the end. Uh, there are um, a couple of places where the pattern tells you to cut the working yarn for one of the colors. Like here when I came to this this slot here. I was somewhere here and it said that you need to cut the burgundy and I decided to just you know mo modify the pattern a bit just kind of so that I I was able to just leave the burgundy colored yarn here waiting until I was done with the gray part and then I could continue with the burgundy without cutting the yarn. So I basically only had the beginning and the end. Actually I even you know sewed in the beginning as I was knitting the beginning so so I didn't have many many 
ends to breathing at the end. Uh, this this shawl um, begins from the middle and goes one direction and you leave the stitches on hold so it's a provisional cast on and then you do the other part of it. So you make the other part of it. So I really like the, the way it's knit and then because it's a bit art shaped I have not blocked this and I don't think I'm gonna because it just really really cozy as it's so kind of plumb and it's not stretched out and because I chose a bit of a thicker yarn than in the pattern it's quite big already so I don't need to stretch it out. My mother-in-law made uh, a couple and she's made them from beautiful uh, merino, uh, single merino yarns. Uh, I think she even had like merino silk and after she blocked those they're so gorgeous and drapey and they, as a size they're a bit smaller than this but they're totally different she made one in one color only and that's beautiful too so you can really play with this pattern i've seen pictures from people where they've had um at least five different colors so you can choose you can choose your scrappy uh yarns from your stash and just you know make a couple of blocks with some colors and then maybe have a, a main color and maybe four or five contrasting colors for different sections. So if that kind of piqued up the interest after the after the story it's all men. W-M-E-N like men at the end. Highly recommend the pattern and the yarn. Love it. Then uh, another finished object, and these I talked about in the Thrumped Mittens um, podcast or YouTube video a couple weeks back. And in that I show a technique that I used for these two mittens. And from there onwards I've already come across another pattern or technique that I'm using for these, which I think is even, even easier than what I used for these. So I'll tell you a bit about that. Uh, this is a new to me technique, this thrummed mittens. So what's the point in these is that you add these thrums that are then on the inside of the mitten. <laughs> Look at this. It's a fuzzy, cozy, warm, it even gives it uh, quite a bit of windproof. For the thrums I am using a uh, felting yarn which is 100% wool. It's a Novita, old Novita yarn from Finland called Huopanen. And uh, it's, it felts, they felt together. It, when you're wearing it, it's, it's like a, you put your hand into this soft, well, at least in my opinion, it's soft. Some people might not find the 100% wool as soft, but you can find different kinds of uh, fiber that you could use for the thrums. I make, I, make, I make these for uh, charity and it's a local charity to me which is for homeless and uh, they need to be brought in there before the end of November and when I make these, uh, well when my godmother makes these, what she does is she cuts these thrums and has them at the side where she's knitting and then just when she gets a, across to a place where she needs to add one she just kind of knits it in there. What I did was that I held the yarn the, for the thrums and um, I used a yarn guide and uh, then I kind of had a, a loop between each of these thrum uh, stitches and then once the one row was done then I would cut the in-between yarns and then knit a couple of rows and then again do the same. But what I've done since then was that I started I found a pattern, which I uh, can't find now, my phone is filming this, I'll, I'll link it below, um, it's a, if you go to Ravelry and you're looking for top down knitted mittens, it gives, gives you that pattern where it is actually a, a, a set of blog posts where you can see how to start a mitten from the fingers. There's like a couple of different ways to do that and then it gives you what kinds of measurements your hand has, how long you should make this top part and how to make the thumb and then it's a separate blog post about 
the rest of the mitten. So I'm using that and I'm, and I'm using the magic loop to make two at the same time. I'm using this uh, Svarta Foret yarn called Ulrika. And uh, it's 100% superwash uh, yarn, 100% wool superwash yarn, 50 grams for has 100 meters, so 100 grams has 200 meters. And I have two skeins. It's easy to buy this like this from the store. So one skein, and I'm pulling the yarn from the inside. So one skein for the one mitten, and the other one for the other. And then I'm using the same yarn. Um, for the thrums and what I'm doing now this time is that I'm not um, carrying the, the the yarn for the thrums I'm actually always knitting because for something like 15 rows because here I'm adding the thrums like every six rows and every six stitches kind of a, with an offset of three so I knit like I don't know 15 rows and then I take a needle and I actually just uh, darn in, kind of stitch in those thrums and it's easy when I'm doing for the couple of rows of the thrums so that I can still work with my fingers at the edge of the the work and kind of loop it with my fingers so I, I found this now to be probably so far the easiest technique to add the thrums I don't think it would be as easy if I knit the full mitten and then try to add them in between because then you have to twist and turn the mitten kind of inside out and it's kind of cumbersome to have it have the rest of the mitten in the way so i think just kind of doing this every now and then on the way probably is the fastest way of making these and if you want to take part in this uh charity knitting of mittens uh, you can choose any mitten pattern or not use a pattern just you know whatever way you make your mittens and you can choose a charity close to you and close to your heart whatever you feel like you want to be donating warm mittens to and if you use these hashtags in Instagram either it's in Finnish it says uh, heat from mittens so la pasista lämpöä uh, with Scandi alphabets 2021 or hashtag mitts with love 2021 these are also on my uh, Lena's Day Instagram account uh, if you go there you can see a post with these trunk mitts and if you um, knit a pair of mitts you donate to charity uh, please use this hashtag and around Christmas time I will then draw winners from one from both of these hashtags. So if you wanna, you can use both of these hashtags. Uh, and it's gonna be a gift card to Ravelry in a way that you can choose one, two or three patterns so that the total is max 15 euros, $15, but you know, they're, they're about, they're almost the same. And um, it's just, you know, a fun way to share the warmth of the wool. So if you want to take part, do this and please uh, use these. You can use these hashtags also when you're knitting them, but then please make sure that you do end up donating by Christmas time to some charity. So a fair game. I know that many times I start knitting something and I'm thinking of donating them to charity. Something life happens or I pick up another project or somebody's birthday comes along and I end up giving the, that pair of socks or something to someone uh, close to me and not to charity so please only use these if you are or have been um, giving them to charity or if you use them on the way and you then um, totally just use them when you're knitting the mit mittens if that's your plan to give them to charity and then if your name is drawn, but you never ended up giving them to charity, just be fair about it and tell me and we'll choose another winner. So that's fine too. That's totally fine. Life. Life, life. Um, and about people having their birthdays. I always miss people's birthdays. I don't know how that's so hard. I don't know. Are you better at that? How, how do you get better at that? How do you... How do you 
in time realize that somebody's having a birthday and have a present for them and have it either made or bought or whatnot early enough and send it to them for their birthday. There's like a way of getting better at this, which would be something that I could follow, which is not like make a list because I'm not good. I, I make great lists. I just don't follow them. But anyhow, somebody had a birthday and I missed it. But I'm thinking that maybe they would enjoy the same shawl that I always enjoy wearing. So this is how it looks like. It's uh, called Close to You. And it's uh, Justina uh, Lorkovska's shawl pattern. Uh, Close to You and you can find it in Ravelry for free. I've shown a couple of these shawls earlier in my uh, YouTube channel for uh, different colors, different yarns. And this one is coming up from this blue that has different shade shades. I'll show you the yarn. Let me first share the tag because it is Malabrigo Sock in the colorway Wales Road. I don't know if it actually gets it sharp. I hope it does, but uh, Malabrigo sock, so it has about 400 mm, meters, so 440 yards in 100 grams, and it's the colorway 247 Wales Road. Look at this. Isn't it? It has this kind of depth of, this, of the ocean and shades of the, I think of the whales as kind of all different kinds of shades of gray and blue and all of that so and it's Wales Road so I think it's gorgeous it's a leftover yarn from a baby sweater that I made years ago uh, I believe I think this was the color um, it, I made um, tin can knits um, flax light for baby size and it used a, maybe a bit over um, a skein and this one, uh, this leftover skein is about 80 grams, maybe a bit more. So it's going to be a good size of shawl because it doesn't need to be that big. This is a mindless knit. You can, you can do this at any time, anywhere. It is just easy to uh, knit and it's very, uh, there's like 10 rows every now and then, 10 rows of just uh, Carter and then couple rows where you have to kind of pay attention but once you've made like three or four times the same repeat it's just you don't need the pattern with you anymore and you can just continue plus you I like these types of patterns where you just knit until you're almost out of yarn and then you just end it so that you don't need to worry about do I have enough yarn so also for that it's a really really nice pattern for kind of leftover yarn you can just start it and make it as big as you have yarn for Okay, then uh, another one which is not so easy to knit, uh, even though it's very mindless, uh, but this is out of, uh, this is the Villa Pesute, which is a, a challenge for, for just like the, the shawl Umen was a challenge for Finnish knitting podcast uh, Villa Pesu Ohjelma for their September. I think that was September. Think so yes and I think this was August this t-shirt that I'm now making and I'm making it out of this um, mohair the great yarn uh, from concept by Caria and it has 44% um, of mohair 28% of wool and 28% of polyamide and it is um, 50 gram skein 400 meters, 437 yards in one skein. So it's about 800 meters, almost 900 yards per 100 grams. It's very, very light lace weight uh, um, mohair, which makes it a tad uh, difficult to knit if you're not looking because it just kind of, you just kind of have to pay attention that you actually do pick up the yarn. And uh, I'm at, if you watched my earlier podcast where I had not followed the recipe, but had chosen to add increases like for raglan, I don't know why, 
don't know where that came from but my my shirt by the time that it was somewhere here it became like a an elephant ear and it was like going all over the places so i ripped back and and now i've uh, started again well i didn't rip all the way back but to the point where i had started the increases so almost all the way and then now it looks totally different and of course now that it's on the needle you can't really see how wide it is it's quite white you can fit two of me in there and that's the point of it that it's really really loose and i'm not sure how how long i'm gonna make it it uh the actual recipe is kind of like where where it's from it's quite cropped but i'm thinking that this might also work if i make it like a tunic a bit longer and i could wear it i have this uh, one um, t-shirt that is longer and maybe I could wear it on top of that but I don't know I'll try it try it on once it once it is a bit longer but I really enjoy making that because it's nice to have something that you now that it's just you know stuck in a in, in the round it's it's quite nice okay, let me sip a bit of tea it's gonna get cool It's Sunday morning, Sunday morning in Finland, in Tampere. And um, I already filmed the Finnish podcast when it was still really, really kind of dim and, and almost dark in the morning when I set up everything and, and I had to use some, some lights and whatnot. But now it's just daylight and I hope the colors are, I hope the colors are more true to what they are. Well then. I always say that I don't buy yarn online. That's history. I used to do, used to not buy yarn online. Since COVID, I think I bought quite a bit. And, but I still am true to that, that if I go to a store, to a yarn store anywhere, and I have the chance to actually go to a store and take the, oops, take the yarn into my hands feel how it feels, if it's soft, if it's rustic, if it's, how does it feel? If a store offers me the chance to kind of get to know the yarn, that's the place where I should be buying that yarn from and not go home and buy it online from another store. So that I still hold on to. But um, when I was knitting, planning to knit the omen that I made from Vuonoi Wilhelmi, I was, uh, I at the same time, because I'm not familiar with the Finnish lamb wool, when I ordered the yarn for that shawl online, I also ordered these two skeins. So this is a uh, Lieko. This is a uh, Finnish yarn Lieko Kehrätär. And um, there is, I don't know if you could see this tag. There you go. And uh, I wonder if that's even right side up. Let me look at it once it's been there. So it's felting, um, moth proof, finish, 100% finished wool. And there's the tag for the, for the maker. And um, so it's Kehratar and uh, there was this uh, online uh, exhibition of yarn in Finland and I, it was organized via Facebook. I don't use Facebook and it, for me it sounded really cumbersome to go there and, and follow the events over the weekend in Facebook and I would need to be in a certain, I don't know where there. And then I decided, oh, it's not for me. Then we were on our way uh, home from a football tournament and of course I was sitting at the back of the car and checking the Instagram and I saw that Gas Saporti came uh, live or had been live with their um, update for, the, for that weekend's uh, yarn exhibition and I saw that they were changing the thickness of this yarn just a tad. So now it's um, two times uh, 125 TX, and now it's it's gonna be so it's about 400 yard, 400 meters 400 grams, 
and they're gonna make it a tad uh, thicker so that it's stronger and it's gonna be something like 370 meters per 100 grams so it's tiny tiny difference and you can still for example use the two different uh, yarns together in a knitting it doesn't really show that much but they said that for that reason uh, all these yarns were on sale on their website and I went to look and they were like I don't know seven different colors and or eight one two three four five six there were seven different colors and uh, I ordered one of each at least for one yarn I ordered more than one skein and there was one color that I did not order and that was pink and now I regret not ordering the pink so what did we learn we learned that uh <laughs> <laughs> it's not something that I feel sorry for afterwards if I bought yarn but I really regret not not ordering that pink also because I think it would have been awesome with these okay so then I there were these yarns that came home and to my surprise since I had these two earlier that I felt like didn't match one of them is really this kind of forestry color it has this the fiber has been colored first and then it's been spun so it's it you see those little flecks of different color but all of these colors that came I'll just take these skeins as this and plus those three that are there I feel like they all fit together so what I decided is that I've had one dream knit, which has been this Call of the North. So it's Pohjolan Kutsu in Finnish, and then it's Call of the North in, in English by Sisko Salpakivi. It's in Novikanit's website. I believe they may have, have it also in, in English. It's free. And what I know is that if even though you wouldn't... Um, I understand Finnish if, if they all I believe they have it in English and um, but it has because it's free I can show you that it, it has the the patterns for the different motives that are are across the the sweater it has multiple different motives and it uses different colored yarns and I decided that I'm gonna start that so I started with the color that I felt that would be um, something that I would like to have next to my face as this uh, tall turtleneck and what I did is I used the Italian cast on that has these kind of yarn floats on the back for a couple rows something like three four rows so you knit it in a way that it's kind of like um, 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 slip as if to purl it and then purl or slip as if to purl it and then knit and this is how it looks like then on the outside so it gives you this very nice kind of a it doesn't go too loose it's a bit it stays at its place so once once I bend this down it doesn't go all the way kind of on these kind of waves or something at the edge so I like the way that the edge looks like after it's bent folded and something that the pattern does not have is short short row shaping and I've learned that if like from Rittari the Icelandic shirts uh, if I don't add anything to the back of the neck or to the to the back kind of here where I'm separating for for sleeves the the shirt kind of gets to my throat and I put some short rows to the back so in the front of this sweater, so this is the very center of the front. It has, after the ribbing, it has three rows of stockinette. And that's when you're supposed to start then for the color work patterns. But I made short rows so that at the, at the center of the back, I have already eight small rows. So altogether 11 rows of knitting in the back. 
and they come to the side and I use that technique where you kind of check the number of stitches for for the part of the sweater where you are separating for the sleeves you have the front panel you have the back panel and then you have the same percentage of stitches for the front for the neck part and then you kind of see that okay that is the part that you don't need that much of the short girls to come to maybe one sixth of it and then you come there you knit there then you turn I use the German short girls technique you turn I mark the place where I turn, I go all the way back, I knit across or purl across when it's that way and then come to here. Also the same kind of one sixth into the stitches that would be the front part and then turn, mark that place, go around and then come back almost to the place where I first turned but something like three, four stitches before that. Turn, mark it, go across, turn like four stitches before turn, mark it, go across and I keep doing that until I have the total of eight rows at the back. So it's four turns on both sides. Maybe a very, very familiar technique to many of you, but that's maybe not for everyone, but that's how I make the, the, um, the simplest short row technique for the rise of the back so that it's not, I don't feel the pattern kind of throating me back like this. But anyhow, it's coming along and now I've caked a couple of new colors. So the, the next uh, motive in the shirt, it, it actually calls for four different colors in that same small uh, area. But I'm gonna just have one background color and then one color for the, for the motive as the gray. And uh, yeah, that's how it's gonna continue and then I'll have to uh, I, I don't have to, but I can use the rest of the colors. I'm so excited about that sweater. Seriously. So excited about that sweater. Okay, and then another thing that I actually started already, which I'm excited about to start again later. Let me tell you a bit more about it. This is a sweater called Lumme. It's from uh, Sari Nordlund. And let me show you the beautiful design that she has for it. That is just absolutely gorgeous. And in a local yarn store uh, near Tampere, it's about 30 minutes from Tampere, there is a, a, a place called Ori Vesi. And they have a Langakalpa uh, Onnen Lankamoinen. And there they have one of these Lume shirts in uh, black and kind of fuchsia red. The, the colors, the the contrast color is the fuchsia and then the black is the background and it's just gorgeous. So I had seen that when I went there and I purchased in last summer sometime, I purchased the same yarn, but in green. So I don't know how to pronounce this because this is a, a French yarn and it's called Juliette to my best of my knowledge. And uh, it's 100% wool. It has 250 meters in 100 grams. So it's quite thick. Worsted weight yarn. And my plan was to make it from this green and have this orange as, a, as the color for the flower motifs. And I started it. And it has a high neck. And it stopped down. And I started it with the same technique as I did for this one. So that I had those... Um, kind of yarn floats at the back and it would be kind of nice to have the edging and I turned it so twisted it so that that would be on the outside because I it, from the pictures it, it looked like it's um it's just it's just high rise neck and that's it so that would be the top edge of it and then it was centimeters and centimeters it was really like 3.75 inches already of that I was like this is getting quite tall for the neck how is this where what what happens to this do i just leave it like this i had read like for first five pages of the pattern and then i went to look into more and i went all the way through the pattern to the last 15th page of the pattern and there it says that at the end fold the collar backwards so inwards and then needle it in and I thought, oh my goodness, because, well, the pattern itself doesn't call for this beginning. The pattern itself calls for 
She has the long tail cast on. But I thought that if I have a long tail cast on, that's what I had thought. If I have a long tail cast on and it's visible, it's kind of not nice and clean. So that's why I chose the Italian and twisted it and did whatnot. But now that I know that it's supposed to be folded backwards and needled in, then it's going to be too thick. It's going to be really cumbersome to actually do it to the back of it. So I decided to rip it all back. And then because I had all the time been thinking about that black and fuchsia colors for that Luma shirt. I, while I was doing this, I was like, okay, I know that I would need a bit more of this green color than what I had bought for that Luma sweater if I made another sweater so that I have the name here for. So I ripped back and I'm going to use this beautiful Juliet yarn for a different pattern. I'm, I'm going to buy that actual black and red for, or gray and like a brick red or something for that Luma shirt. And from this Juliet, I am going to make this shirt, which is the monochrome pullover by Katrin, 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 Katrin Snyder, I would say. I don't know how you would say it. Katrin Snyder to me. But anyhow, this pullover. And I don't have the pattern yet. It's in Ravelry. It's in my queue. But I I drew just a little drawing of it. So it, it is this sweater that has this, uh, like a chevron motif in the middle. And I think it's going to be gorgeous to have it from this green and then have the pop-up color as the orange. And then what I'm going to do well, I needed more of this yarn for this sweater. So I called that yarn store and said, do you still have some of this green, the printemps, which is a, a spring in French. Do you still have this color? And they, they had it not in the same colorway, but uh, the same um, dye lot, but still the same colorway. I can't see the difference. I seriously can't. I think they're the, very much the same. And with this pattern, I can easily, the, the extra yarn that I bought, I can use it on the top or in between these um, contrasting colors. So when I'm striping it and then just use the bigger amount of green that I have on these solid parts that I have here. And this pattern is very interesting in a way that at least I've never done this type of a sweater before. It, ha it is, it begins from here from the bottom of these uh, chevron stripes. It started from here and then it, you work it towards the top. And then once you're done with the top part, then you, you leave these stitches on hold. So it's a provisional cast on and then you just work the bottom parts of the shirt later. Have you done something like that before? And I don't, I always think that it's easy to try the sweater on when you're working top down so this, this, this is actually worked from here to the top, which I like for the neck part, because then I always think that, that it's more tidy to kind of, you know, bind off in, in a neat way for the collar. So I don't know how that works. And now if you now became interested because it's such a different um, style of making that, it's the monochrome pullover. So that I will make at some point. I think I have to first finish the <laughs> this tea, then I have to finish the uh, the mitts, of course, for charity. I can work on the shawl. I can work on this one, the Call of the North, and then I'll cast on the the monochrome. And then when I get the yarn at some point, I will cast on the lume. <laughs> but hey, having different projects, kind of even planned, uh, gives me joy. Is that the same for you? Are you, for example, knitting just one at a time or are you always having many or knitting one and thinking of five next ones? I don't know. Would, would like to know. Then I would like to share this new toy of mine. Uh, my husband saw pictures of his friend's friend selling like a, a, a set of items. They were all piled up and, and he was like selling uh, in one picture, there were like maybe 20 items, like I'm just, you know, getting rid of some storage stuff. 
and my husband comes to me and says, can you look at this picture and tell me, is this the, the thing, because it was all piled up, is this the thing that you would like to have for your, for your yarn? I say, yes. So uh, I bought this from his friend and we drove there to pick it up during this uh, couple of days of fall vacation that we had past week and it's old and he had to fix it a bit and it it has a stand that i can screw into it like an edge of a table or something there's one part missing so this top here i don't know what's supposed to be there but uh when i tighten it up from from below so that i kind of adjust how wide it is for the for the yarn then this part doesn't stay put but it kind of gets up from here which means that when I have the yarn here and I start kind of working around, it just get it just goes up like this and then the yarn falls down. Well, so far what we did was that my husband held it like this and then it was okay. Or we put it to a next skein, we put it uh, this to a table and he didn't need to hold it, but he just kind of pushed it down from here so that it would not go in and, and drop off the yarn but I'm excited about it because I haven't had anything like this before and it's nice to then make the skeins because now I don't always have to wait for someone to either have their hands out, out for me or or maybe I can cake up a few more skeins at the same go and always nice to kind of rescue old stuff love it love it love it okay uh shout out shout out to a couple of podcasts and if you want to see uh, more of these uh, Call of the North sweaters for example this Pipotusta which is a, a Finnish uh, podcast it has knit one and is knitting another one and she also has it with the same tag she has it hashtag um, not in Instagram handle uh, she has is Pipotusta where she has pictures of her Call of the North sweaters and then, of course, probably if you're watching this in English, you also know Andrea Maori. And, and Andrea Maori is a great knitwear designer. And she has started this year, I think it started this year, this kind of Q&A every Friday. So people send in questions and she answers them. And, they, and she, you can learn a lot. At least I can. I learn a lot. Almost every time there's something that I have not thought of or didn't know of or something like that so uh people to stop and andre maori shout outs for other podcasts okay okay i think that's it for this sunday morning knitting and fibers and everything and i think that was quite a bit wasn't it I hope you're also knitting something or crocheting something and maybe enjoying the fall weather of the area where you're at or maybe you're in the southern hemisphere please let me know down below if you are and you're headed towards the summer and um, we'll I would be so glad to know if you were knitting some project at the same time that you were watching it so please uh, write it down below and we'll see you next time here at the same channel for some other knits and i can't promise if anything will be made or done by that time but maybe there are some more new cast ons or something next time okay happy knitting and stay safe